ladies and gentlemen. Today we're here to debate upon the motion, this house will comfort the comfort woman. My name is Hyunshin Park, and I'm the first speaker of the Proposition Society. As the Prime Minister, uh, <clears throat> I'll first establish the context of the, today's debate, and then define the key terms, provide a policy, and finally, <clears throat> and elaborate on one of our substantive arguments. The second speaker, Sung Han, will elaborate on two of our substantive arguments, and Donna will summarize the whole debate. Uh, before I um, define the key terms, I'd first like to uh, <clears throat> establish the context of today's debate. In 1932, the Japanese military recruited local population as comfort women for the sexual pleasures of, soldiers, of their soldiers. However, many women responded to calls not knowing that they were being uh, pressed into sexual slavery. Others were recruited by force. According to the International Commission of Jurists, the estimate, the estimate of comfort women ranges between 80,000 to 200,000. And about 80% were Korean. Comfort women who were recruited had to sexually serve 10 to 30 men per day <clears throat> in, in poor environments, even uh, for teenagers who were sexually inexperienced. After the war, the war was over, they were abandoned by the military. Now I'll define the key terms about, to, about key terms in our today's debate. Comfort means to free from pain by compensating both mentally and financially. Comfort women are those who were forced to serve as sex slaves for Japan servicemen during 1931 to 1945. Comfort women mainly consisted of Korean, Chinese, Singaporeans, and Philippines. Um, having defined the key terms, now let me move on to our policy. Our policy is to confirm the comfort women through mental and financial competition from the Japanese government. Before asking Japan for compensation, a country that had comfort women will make its stance clear in the international community by making sure that people know internationally uh, what happened to the comfort women and how severe was the situation was when they were the comfort, when they were comfort women. Also, our policy uh, will strongly urge Japanese a government to apologize in the General Assembly of UN and make financial compensation, compensations about uh, $100,000 to individual comfort women each year for three consecutive years. Our goal is to start financial compensation point of information, sir. Uh, until the end of 2009 and achieve official uh, apology within a week since Many of the victims of uh, comfort uh, victims are old and are likely to uh, are likely to die soon. <laughs> in the meanwhile, in case of Japan refuses to do so, Korean government will raise the financial support uh, given to the victims currently and urge the inter international community to pressure Japan to admit and apologize for their crimes. Uh, having talked about the policy, now I'll talk about. The, our, sus, our team's substantive arguments. We believe this policy should pass because it, it is necessary, practical, and it will preserve human rights. I, the Prime Minister, will elaborate, elaborate on the necessity of this policy. Singon will elaborate on the other two. Uh, this policy is necessary because Japan has crippled many lives of young women and the international community should not neglect that fact. Uh, Japan's actions of using comfort women were illegal at that time, even at that time. According to the 1998 UN report by Gay with Google, the system of comfort women used by the Japanese government during World War II falls under the international definition of, of slavery. Sex, uh, se sexual slavery was illegal at that time. Rape, including forced prostitution, uh, was a war crime at, uh, at that time also. Also, there's evidence that the government was related to the military using the comfort women. Um, in January of 1992, the documents about comfort stations were revealed in the library of uh, defense agencies, showing clearly that the government 
was related to the military within the comfort zone. It is obvious that when a person or a country commits a crime, they should be punished. Then why are we punishing Japan? Ladies and gentlemen, uh, we shouldn't let Japan get away with, with their crimes. Uh, restoration, reparation, and respect for the comfort women. Go for proposition. Thank you. And show how our show how our side has successive, successfully explains it. As a leader of our opposition, I will rebut the flaws the pro team made and provide you with our alternative. Also, I will elaborate the necessity of our pro, our policy. Deputy Chang Sok will provide some uh, some rebuttals and explains practicality of our policy. Lastly, Chewan will summarize the whole debate and provide benefit of our uh, alternative. Before we start, I will rebut some of the points the pro made, pro team made. And the first speaker, Han Xin, said that Han Xin's argument was about when assembly said to Japan that they should provide uh, 100,000 for each woman, each comfort woman, for three years. However, there is a record that Japan already, already provide, tried to pr provide money to the comfort woman. And I will proceed my opinion, of my substantive argument later. Now I will elaborate our alternative and point out why our team has better argument than our team. We are not denying that comfort women didn't get any kind of physical or mental damage. However, the comfort women have already been provided the things that they required. Thus, our alternative is to keep uh, status quo because Japanese government, no thank you, already compensated the comfort women. At first, Korean women requested Japanese government by promises. First, Japanese government should officially acknowledge and apologize that it took Korean women forcefully to the war, to the army. Second, uh, comfort women required that Japan should reveal its cruelty and brutality toward comfort women in World War II. Third, it should build monuments to apolo apolo apologize to comfort women. Fourth, it should compensate the miseries and scars the comfort women underwent in financial way. Last, it should clearly state the notoriousness of it in its authorized textbook of Japan. In response to three questions, in 1993, Japanese Prime Minister expressed official apology and remorse to all comfort women that, that it gave immeasurable pain. And a few years later, Japanese government repeated its apology and acknowledgement. And also, in 1995, it formed AWF, Asian Women Fund, in order to comfort all the victims of sexual slaves in World War II. And they were, Thai, they were the people of Taiwan, Netherlands, Philippines, Korea, and Indonesia. AWF offered $14.6 million to distribute 360 women. However, Korean comfort women denied the apology and the money they tried to give it. To some of ladies and gentlemen, four of the requests, except for acknowledgement of textbook, others were undertaken by Japanese government. How can you say that it is not enough to be able to abide by promises that comfort women, the comfort women previously wanted to? I have talked about rebuttals to the proposition and elaborate our alternative. Also, I've clearly proved our necessity aspect of alternative. 
Second speaker, Chang Seok, will elaborate practical, practicality, adding rebuttals. And ladies and gentlemen, if we truly uh, try, care about what the best way is, then vote for the opposition. Thank you. Okay, now let's welcome the second speaker. Han Jung Han. Yeah. 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 Oh. 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 <laughs> Restoration, reparation, and respect for comfort women. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies, ladies and gentlemen. I'm the second speaker of the proposition, Brian Han. Before I move on to my substantive argument, I'd like to rebut some of the preposterous arguments made by the proposition. First, they contradicted themselves by saying that they don't agree with the motion. But they said they would take another step, another step to comfort the comfort woman. <coughs> also, it's funny that they mentioned they claim that we failed to explain the practicality of our policy, since it's our, it's our second argument which, which I will be presenting. Also, they claim that they will build a monument. Ladies and gentlemen, we already have one. It's called Nanume Jip and it's located in Gyeonggi-do, Gwangju-si, Gwangju-si, Chechumen, Wondang-ni. In Nanume Jip, there's a cemetery from comfort women who died, and museum for, that shows the misdeeds of Japanese soldiers, and monuments who took com commemorate the com comfort women. Building a new monument is just a misallocation of money, we will, which we would rather give the money to the victims who are paid enough for, the, for more practical needs. Now that I've rebutted, rebutted my opposition's argument, I'd like to move on to our team's second substantive argument, practicality. In 2007, July 30th, the House of Representatives brought up a bill that required the Japanese government for official, official approval and apology for comfort women. This bill was passed unanimously in 35 minutes, even though it had been rejected for six months and lobbied by the Japanese. In 1988, a district court in Shimonoseki delivered a verdict that the Japanese government, government is responsible for the compensation. And in January of 1992, documents about compensation was revealed in the Library of Defense Agency. After the disclosure, the Japanese government admitted the conscription and have, and have made an unofficial apology. What we have to focus here is not the fact, it's not the fact that after numerous proposals, the Japanese government has not yet made an apology yet. Come on. <laughs> Are you aware that the like government of Japan has officially apologized to the comfort woman? When? In, In August 1993, August 4th. There was an unofficial. As I said, there was an unofficial, and Japan's Japanese government haven't hadn't made any official. Government, it has been proved that in 1997 there was. You are? Yes. <laughs> How can they prove that it's not on the. It's, it because in 1997 the House of Representatives. The premise the House of Representatives representative passed the bill was Japanese government had not made an apology yet. That was why the bill could have passed. And. <coughs> yes. And what we have to focus here is not the fact that after numerous proposals, the Japanese government has not made an apology. But what we have to remember is during its process, it gained attention from the international society. Community. International, community. yeah, community, which expanded the range of awareness. Also, even though unofficial, we actually managed to make them apologize. These are practical methods to take another step toward our, toward our goals. Our third defensive argument is preservation of human rights. Ladies and gentlemen, all humans are entitled, entitled to enjoy the freedom. Now, these comfort women were forcefully, forcefully conscripted or deceived to join the comfort station. And of course, they hadn't had a slightest idea what, what was laid upon them. They were forced to have sexual relationship with Japanese soldiers, which in nowadays is called rape. So much for human rights, ladies and gentlemen. 
And the victims were paid $31,000 in 1998 and $43,000 in, in 2008, adding up to the amount of $74,000. And since 2004, the Korean government is paying them $800 a month. $800 a month. They live a life of shame and suffering for 70 years, and all they have is $70,001 plus $800 monthly. Let's divide it by, divide it by seven, 70. It's a little more than 1,001 year. 1,001. That's all they ever paid, ladies and gentlemen. And even, the, and even the fact that former comfort women are not compensated with enough amount of money is not much of a big deal if we compared to the ironic fact that about ironic fact about who is actually giving the money. It's not the Japanese government, ladies and gentlemen, it's ours. <coughs> it has no meaning, ladies and gentlemen. Of course the victims need the money, but not in this way. No. If our, our government gives the money, it's called subsidy or supplemental living allowance. What we need is reparation, and that will come from the Japanese government. This is not the end of the story. They, as human beings, must receive mental reparation as well. The Japanese government must give an official apology because financial compensation only means here's the money and now get lost. Rather, the Japanese government has to show the victims that they feel remorse and they are truly sorry. Ladies and gentlemen, we are not asking you to be patriotic, or be re but be reasonable and ethical. Vote for the justice and what is right. Vote for the proposition. Thank you. Okay, I uh, remember the uh, judges, debaters, after this speech, we'll have two floor speeches. So think about what you might say in case I draft you to speak from one side or the other. All right, let's now welcome the second speaker for the opposition side, Tung Chang Zuck. What has been made, uh, what has been asked, has been done. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I'm the second speaker, Brian Song, of the opposition side. And as the second speaker, I would like to elaborate on the practicality of our policy, which is keeping the status quo. We are not saying that we do not care about the comfort woman, but what we are saying is that um, what has been done is adequate. But before I move on, I would like to rebut some ridiculous points made by the proposition side. Um, first of all, um, we didn't say we would take another step. We said we would keep the status quo, not take another step. And also, Seungwon said um, it's a waste of money to build monuments, but our first speaker, Seungwon, didn't say that we should build monuments. And also, <laughs> Japan has done many things of giving apologies. Um, for example, in 1992, Chief Cabinet Secretary Koichi Keto and 1993, Japanese Chief Cabinet Secretary Kono Yohei has both given a statement admitting their faults and apologizing for it. There are, no, there are also apology letters from the four prime ministers of Japan. Also, there were 1995 and 2005 resolutions adopted by the Japanese House of Representatives, which express deep remorse for the, the um, misdeeds they have done. No. So now let's move on to the issue of practicality. Um, first, let me tell you why the proposition's policy is impractical. Um, they said they will give money to the comfort woman. But who are we to give the money? How are we going to find the comfort woman? Um, according to the International Prosecution Section, Volume 8, 02, case number 43, um, the Japanese government has burned the confidential documents and the evidence of ill treatment of prisoners of wars and civilians. In page 91, it says that the actual number of comfort women remains unclear because the Japanese army incinerated many crucial documents right after the war. So 70% so 70 of the army's records were burned. And how are we supposed to find and distinguish 
who are the people who deserve the compensation? So, um, so in Netherlands, 12 people have feigned to be comfort women who are only interested in getting the money, according to the Project Implementation Committee. Not only that, but the comfort women are all spread around the world, from China, Thailand, Vietnam, Malaysia, Indonesia, Korea, and many other countries. It will be almost impossible to find all these women. In 1992, there was in the, uh, the defense agency a document to reveal that, that uh, stated the name of the, pro the comfort woman in that time. And also, the Korean government has run a center for reporting comfort women, and 234 reported them in 1992. So, how are you So, you have to. There are connections to the compensate. Yeah. I don't get what you're saying. <laughs> so, and also, another question comes to mind how much money should be given? Um, they said that they would give $100,000, but let's look at the status quo. Are there any points in setting the amount of money when we, either, uh, when we don't even know um, the exact number of comfort women around the world? <laughs> Um, the AWF's government funding is already used for social assistance programs and medical care for the comfort women. Also, as Sriran said, AWF have given $14.6 million to 360 comfort women while the others are refusing to get the money because it's known as an unofficial, unofficial fund. We have already given the money to the ones who want it with the official apology signed by the Prime Ministers of Japan. But is it practical using our money and try, time, trying to give compensations to the comfort woman who had already refused to get it? Already much money has been put to compensate for those who are willing to get the compensation. It is also impractical since we cannot ensure whether the money is delivered to the comfort woman. According to Mindy L. Kotler, the di director of Asia Policy Point, the compensation for Indonesian survivors went directly to the government to build apartments in which none of the money has been benefited any Indonesian comfort woman. Many organizations such as AWF, Korean Council, and Friends of Comfort Women in Australia have given the money to compensate, but the messenger who delivers the money have used it for, their, for other purposes. Ladies and gentlemen, is this what we call practical? Is this the right way of compensation? Already enough resources and money are put in to compensate the comfort woman. In Okinawa, there is a memorial to console the comfort woman. The Korean Council is already building learning centers, wars, and women's human rights centers, gathering the fund to build a memorial, cooperating with international human rights organizations and many other activities. They are trying their best. These are all adequate to console the comfort woman. In the students, in the status quo, many things are already being done. However, just to compensate for comfort women who are hard to distinguish, putting extra money, putting extra resources, and putting extra time when many other people are calling for help in our society is inefficient and impractical. The status quo in which many efforts are already put are what we should seek, not putting extra money to do practical things. For these reasons, please vote for the opposition. Thank you. Uh, I'm, I'm again uh, willing to accept volunteers. We have any? Which sides? Trap. All right. Let's have.
today the opposition stated that they will maintain the status quo. However, in the status quo, many grandmothers are gathering up every Wednesday to protest and to claim their rights in front of the Pence Embassy. And in the status quo, many people are suffering and from psychological trauma and other physical disorders. And this is, and is this, is this what the opposition wants to maintain? No. Ladies and gentlemen, the opposition also stated that the prop proposition's policy is impractical because we cannot find every people, every comfort woman. However, just because we, a government cannot find and help every one of comfort women does not mean their rights should be neglected. So, in this respect, it is it is a good attempt for government and the house to comfort and support the women, comforted women, in both financial and psychological ways, so that they can they can get their rights back and they can have a better life. Thank you, yeah. Thank you sir. Well, first of all, um, my name is Poojin, and I would like to speak for the opposition. And first of all, I would like to state that. Just because the opposition is supporting the status quo does not mean that the status quo itself is doing the best job. The status quo itself is a working system, and what that means is that it does not stay the same because the status quo itself moves itself to make developments and implementations to make the comfort woman and find the woman to get into a better position in society, and that's what they're doing. The status quo does not mean that they are necessarily just sitting there doing nothing. <laughs> and also, um, I'd like to tell, talk to you about the responsibility. Well, the proposition seems to think that the opposition is, um, the proposition seems to go into a radical side that's saying that opposition is not taking any responsibility. Also, the close speaker just said that um, the opposition is neglecting the women's rights of um, being compensated. However, this is not necessarily true because, as you see, the opposition has proved to us how they will try to give more mental support and find the people if they can, but it is not going to be helped when the comfort woman does not want it. So they gave us the status quo and enough evidence to actually wrap up why they provide the status quo, whereas the proposition has failed to actually state all the evidences that why we need more development that are radical to the status quo. Thank you very much. Thank you both for speakers. Very good. Very good. Okay. Uh, well, now we give the opportunity to the opposition side to wrap up their case. Let's welcome E.J. Mons. Ladies and gentlemen. I'm the third speaker of the opposition team, and my name is Lee Bryan. Okay. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, let me begin this day by saying two things. First, that I also care about the comfort woman. In fact, that we care more about the comfort woman than anyone else in this room. <laughs> Second, that we are opposing this motion, this house will comfort the comfort woman, not because we think that the women do not deserve compensation, but because we think that, that what they've been given until today and what they're receiving right now is enough. Ladies and gentlemen, we, the opposition, had mainly two reasons why we disagreed with the motion. First, because Japan, Japan has already compensated for the comfort woman, woman's need. Second, because the policy of the proposition team is totally impractical. But before I begin, proceed on rebuilding our two substantive arguments, let me rebut the arguments of the proposition team. Okay. The second speaker of the proposition team has come up to this podium and has rebutted our non-existent argument that we will take other steps to comfort the comfort woman. Ladies and gentlemen, we never stated that we will take other steps to comfort the comfort woman. We have stated that we'll keep the statistical. No, no man. <laughs> Sorry for my pronunciation. The second speaker has also come up here and said that the comfort women are not being paid enough. However, ladies and gentlemen, did you know that after 
A statement by the Chief Cabinet Secretary Yohai Kono of the result of a study on the issue of comfort women. The, the Japanese government has formed an organization called the Asian Women's Fund and gathered funds to provide them to the women, the comfort women. Are you aware that they have already been given a chance to accept funding from the Japanese government? Oh, I believe, yes, when? Oh, now, what we want, what the problem do you realize that what, this, what the victims and the profession want is an official public announcement, an acknowledgement? Ma'am, one of your arguments, one of your policy was providing them financial aid. However, we are stating right here that they've already given a chance to have financial aid and that they have, the, they have rejected the chance. Do you believe that even if we give them financial funds right now that they will accept these funds? I don't think so. They have rejected them in the past and they will reject it today. Also, financial compensation, um, the Asian Woman Fund, let me introduce the Asian Woman Fund. It was organized by the Japanese government after a statement, after the statement. It has gathered funds from its citizens and it has provided a chance to the comfort woman of accepting these funds. However, they rejected it. They rejected the funds just because they thought that the Japanese government didn't put enough, their enough budget into this fund. However, ladies and gentlemen, the citizens of Japan has volunteered to give money, to, to give funds to, to the comfort woman. It was volunteered by the citizens of Japan, and because of this reason, many, other, many comfort women in the world have accepted this fund and has thought that this fund was appropriate. However, the, because of that reason, we believe that the part about financial aid is inappropriate. Also, the point on official apologies, the truth is that Japan has already apologized for their past actions. This statement and the letter of ap apologization from the Prime Minister of Japan, Ritaro Hishimoto, has clearly given an apology to these couple of women. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Remember that we do not want the comfort woman to suffer. Remember that Japan has already apologized, reveal the truth, and compensate. Remember that the comfort women are being comforted every day. And remember that the treatment of the comfort woman is all right as it is. And remember that we are only being practical. Ladies and gentlemen, vote for the opposition. Thank you. Okay, let's now welcome the last speaker of the proposition back to Jay Kong Jay. Girls in Korea were faced with offers, job offers actually, that they have the chance to be shipped off to a place where they can learn and earn money at the same time. Now, we know for the fact that 200,000 girls are used to this. And yes, they were shipped off to a place, but the question here is where? Where were they shipped off, ladies and gentlemen? They were shipped off to a place where they were forced to be sexual slaves. Where they were forced to stay in a place where the least degree of human dignity and rights was inserted. They were forced to be destined in their lifetime to just deny the fact that they were even victims. Now, and what did the Japanese government do? Did they amend? Did they apologize? Did they even acknowledge the fact that such case happened? No, they failed to do the least they could do. And if you ask me, what's the least we can do? I would say, the least we can do is to pass this policy. Now, as the third speaker of proposition, I'll tell you how exactly this plan is feasible and what exactly this, this, this policy stands up for. But before we do that, I will just have to rebut some of the preposterous before claims you do that, made by opposition. Now, opposition's argument today was that they should keep the status quo. What has been asked was given. Well, clearly they didn't listen to our policy. Our policy, the, what we are asking, what the women are asking, was that of an official apology and acknowledgement. Now, we want the public announcement of Japan 
to stand up in the international community, acknowledging their faults and trying to amend for what they have done. They haven't done it. Their claim was that four prime ministers gave the letter to this comfort woman. However, however, ladies and gentlemen, they didn't research right. What they what the prime minister did prime ministers did was an was a casual, informal speech. And also that happened in nineteen nineties. The former Prime Minister of Japan, the Prime Minister Abe, quote unquote said he doesn't understand why this is such a big deal because such things never happened. And these women were not forced, but they will they volunteered Point of information. to serve for Japanese army. Now that means that Japan still denies that such case happened and they still deny their responsibility to amend this. Now our our um policy is to urge Korean government to stand up international community, to urge the world to cooperate in urging Japan in urging Japan to acknowledge, apologize and amend for what they did. Now moving on to their um, second argument in practicality in this policy, now they said there is no way to find all of them and pay them. How related to gentlemen, again our um, great prime, no, the deputy prime minister provided with us statistics that in 1992, 234 victims reported, and that 109 are alive in 2007. That there is a way to find them. There is a way to compensate. Now, the reason why they didn't, why why they didn't accept the compensation of Japanese government was that there was no official announcement or apologies. Now, if they accept the money without official apologize, it really makes them prostitutes. They want the op official public announcement and apologize. And unless it's given with the money, unless, it's, unless the money is given with the official apologize, they would not accept it. Um, also, the citizens Acknowledgement and money does not matter because what we want is the, is from Japanese government. Now, ladies and gentlemen, indeed, what has been done was done, and we cannot undone anything that has been done to these victims, no matter how, no matter what compensations or apologies. But that does not mean that they don't deserve any kind of compensations or money. That does not mean that we, as next generation, does not have the duty to serve justice and human rights. Yes, they, what has been done cannot be undone. But ladies and gentlemen, what has been what has been undone here was reparation, restoration, and serving respect for this woman. If you think I deserve so, vote for proposition. Thank you.